know, three Academy Award winning cartoons. Mm -hmm. And then I have a question and answer period. Mm -hmm. I tell a couple of gags in between. Lasts for about an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. I, uh, <coughs> you're quite, quite welcome. Bring, bring the coffee on over, Barb. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you're, uh, you're very welcome to join me here with Mel Blank. I mean, what a treat for me. I have, I, I told someone, I told a friend of mine that I was going to have Mel Blank on, and he went, you're going to have Bugs Bunny on your television program, and, and that's what's happened. All the years of cartoons uh -huh. and the work that you have done. He's a pretty popular character. Yeah. You do have, I? you have, uh, uh, your characters, do they become full and rich in your mind, a complete character? I mean, yeah, complete, once you create it, you never forget it. And it's all part of you? All right. Of your characters, which one of them is the fullest intellectually? I mean, have the fullest background to you? And I'm asking this for a reason, because yeah. I've thought of a question to ask. No, I think blank. Bugs. Bugs is actually, he's, he's the most popular. Okay. How would Bugs Bunny describe Mel Blanc? How would Bugs Bunny describe... Well, Mel let's see now. Bugs would say, oh, Blank, he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. Tell me no. more about how he would describe you as a human being. Because you could describe him as a character, and you could describe his traits and his characteristics and this, and how would Bugs describe you as a human being? Well, this guy can do anything. Hey, you show him a character and he'll give it a voice. And uh, he's also an antique watch collector. And uh, he's a kind of nice guy, as natural as possible. Yeah. He's not one of them egotistical jerks like Daffy Duck. And uh, that's about it. Just a regular guy. So my, that's, <laughs> how many of your characters, I mean, you have just... How do they keep coming? Where do they just keep coming from? The, they show, avoid no, they, a, a, first they show me a character. Yeah. They tell me what he's going to do in the story. They have a storyboard mm -hmm. of the still picture showing me what he's going to do in the pictures. Yeah. Uh, pork, you know, like Porky Pig, I tell the kids at the college, I wanted to be authentic about it. Yeah. So I went out to a pig farm and I wallowed around with the pigs for a couple <laughs> of weeks. Then I come back to the studio and they kicked me out and said, go home and take a bath. <laughs> Which I did when I come back. I said, if a pig could talk, he would talk with a grunt. He said he was a little timid character. He'd talk with a grunt. You know, oink, 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 That's why he, 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 Porky got his voice. That's incredible. Tweety was a little baby bird. I gave him a baby voice. Oh, I thought I'd go up with your cat. Sylvester was a big <laughs> floppy cat. I gave him a floppy voice. All the way down the line with all these different characters. Sure. Do people have favorite characters that they ask you? I mean, somebody that is just really identified with a certain character. Yeah, how, let me, how do they let really? Me, let me give you one of these things, and you can see a few of the characters. I have uh, I have an eight by ten that I want to give to you yeah. of these of the same picture, without the wording on the bottom. That's incredible, and you know, and the whole thing, and this is just a a picture of all the of all the uh, the characters, and when these I these are the popular characters that I created. Yeah. And the, my, my favorite is looking right over your shoulder is Foghorn Leghorn. Is that, that's yeah. the name, right? Yeah, you know how I got that character? I want to hear about that because that character knocks me silly. Every time I see him and the, and the little chicken hawk and the dog and those cartoons, everything stops in order for me to watch that. Years ago, I heard a hard-of-hearing sheriff when I was just a kid. What did you say? I said, what did you say? But pay attention, boy. I can't understand. Not so loud, eh, Dave? I thought that would make a good southern news. I say, pay it, uh, boy, listen, boy, pay, are you listen, uh, you looking for chickens? Well, there, see the little house over there that says D-O-G? That spells chicken. Go get them, boy. Exactly. And, they, <laughs> and I have seen that character taken into movies. I've seen that character, you know, different people do it in movies, and uh, an actor making an entire career doing kind of a uh, part of that, of, that, of that character. There was a guy on the Fred Allen show that uh, I can't think of his name, but... Uh, he had a he did a character like that, and I don't know which one of us got it first, but I got mine when I was a kid. I remember. <laughs> when did you start going back to the to the beginning and getting into uh, doing characters and getting into performing? Because you are a performer, you're a performer. You bring things to people. You step across that that boundary that begins into the area of magic that I that I so yeah. enjoy and get people wrapped up in it. When did you do that? I started when I was just a kid in grammar school. Mm -hmm. um, I used to entertain the kids and the teachers at assemblies 
and they would laugh, and teachers would give me lousy marks, you know, more or less of a normal thing. And uh, that's how I actually got started. I loved vaudeville. Mm -hmm. When Jack Benny came through, uh, I would uh, go maybe twice a week to see him. Mm -hmm. Just I just love this man so much. Never thinking I'd ever eventually work with him. And become friends with him. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't only my boss, he was one of my dearest friends. It's you're seventy years old now, which is you know, which is an incredible thing, and and all, all the work that you're doing. What's it like to be seventy? Well, Jack Benny would say thirty. I feel like I'm thirty nine. Mm -hmm. I know <laughs> how you feel in this, and uh, oh yeah, we're we are. we just oh, been continuing gosh, doing the whole thing. How <laughs> have you? How have how? What is it like? to be 70, because when I'm 70, if I'm 70, and it doesn't matter to me so much whether I will be or not, but when I am, I want uh, to have the the work and the, and the things that you're doing now. That's, if I have a dream, I would like to be able to do that. I oh, think. well, thank you. So you're you're flattering. <laughs> well, all right, in that flattery, how do you deal with flattery? How well do you deal with it? Uh, there are a few people in this business who are not egotistical. To me, a man who uh, who thinks he's great, even though he might be fairly good, uh, doesn't appeal to me. I don't, and especially when he talks about it, mm -hmm. like I very seldom associate with too many of the uh, people in the business because the first thing they talk about is shop. We say, L "Don't talk shop." Mm -hmm. Well, they talk shop, and next week I'm going to do this, and last week I did that. So I <laughs> only talk about a shop. Yeah. And uh, I don't like that. I like to be as natural as possible. Of all the things that you uh, are doing now, what are, what are you involved with, like, right now? Right now I'm doing a new series for Hanna-Barbera. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, it's called the uh, Captain Caveman Show, which is on the ABC network every mm -hmm. Saturday morning. And... Uh, you know, the Warner Brother cartoons that you see yeah, haven't been done since 1963, I think. We were talking about that before. How, all right, could you explain again why the cartoons look different now than they, uh, than they did then? Well, the, the cartoons that you see for Warner Brothers are full animation. They're fully animated, which means every frame is drawn. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it took 125 people nine months to make one six and a half minute cartoon. And of course they can't afford to do that now. No, not at all. Because it would cost between three and four hundred thousand dollars. But what they do is make specials for television. And uh, Chuck Jones is making one now. It's called The Great Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner Chase, mm -hmm. which will be either in a theater or on a, on a network. And, and that's uh, done uh, done in the same uh, in the same style in the full animation style. Fully animated, yeah. Fully animated. Okay. Have you seen other animations and the animations that are out now, like Watership Down and Lord of the Rings and this sort of stuff? Are you a, a fan of animation in itself? Uh, to a certain extent, I am. Yes, a lot of the stuff I can't stand. Yeah. But uh, some of the stuff is is very good, like this uh, Barney Rubble that I do on the Flintstones. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first limited animation cartoons I did, and. Uh, that has good story behind it, and it was sort of a semi-limited animation because they went through a lot of action. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, we're doing a new series on uh, the Flintstones. We're doing about 17 new shows. Is that right? That's right. Who do, you, do you ever? Uh, how do people relate to Mel Blanc? How do how do people that that uh, just in general relate to you? I mean, you have all these characters and all these characters inside you, and how do they how do they relate to you? Well, a lot of people say, Mel Blanc, that jerk? <laughs> 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 no, but I'm very fortunate. I have, thank God, I have never had anyone say, uh, I don't like you on TV mm -hmm. or on, in your cartoons. Every single person that said, I love you. You're yeah. so wonderful in your, in your work. And I thank them. I, you know, it's flattery, yeah. but I, uh, I have to thank them for, uh, for sure. being so attentive and watching the cartoons. And what I use when I speak at the colleges, uh, a lot of the kids, will, I use a stock phrase. The kids will come up to me and say, gee, I grew up with you. I say, so did your old man. I've been doing it for 41 years. 41 years, yeah. that's incredible. And you've had the professionalism that you bring to it. I mean, the work, you're a craftsman. There is, 
I, I don't know of anyone that has done done so much. I mean, I look at the end of the cartoon characterizations. I mean, here I've seen eighty <laughs> characters. I think you know all the characterizations by Mel Blanc. Well, I do most of them. That's true. And uh, on timing, I learned timing actually from Jack Benny. Yeah, he was so wonderful. And uh, I could give you a good example of of Jack's timing. There would be a new man in the cast, and he would have a, a line that followed. Mr. Benny's line, mm -hmm. and he would come in and Jack would say, no, wait, wait till I turn to you. For example, example, Jack would say, well, then he'd turn to this man, mm -hmm. then the man would start speaking. Mm -hmm. But at rehearsal, a man would always come in, you know, before he turned to him. Sure. And uh, this was, timing was the greatest, I think Jack was the greatest of all in timing. Do you do, when you, how does it work? You've got the, you've got, do you have to mimic the characters that you do, and let's say Bugs Bunny is in a cartoon, and you're sitting there, could you tell me the process? You're sitting there and you're applying the voice to the film. How does that work? Well, to create the voice, first they show me the picture of the character. Yeah, and you've got, you've already got, you've already got, let's say it's a cartoon, you're doing a Bugs, uh, you're doing a Bugs Bunny, and do you mimic his, I mean, do you, how do you put your voice to the, to the movement of his mouth? I don't know how I'm asking this because I know well, nothing about am animation well, or how the process. You know, the I whole told you works. the voice is always done first. Sure. The voice is done. They draw to the voice. Oh, I didn't know that. I must not have been listening. A lot of people don't know about that. They think that uh, they make the picture first and then you put the voice in. That's wrong. The voice is done first. They draw to the voice. Okay. I'll give you an example of that. Please. Suppose that uh, an animator is sitting at his table. He has a picture of just the outline of Bugs Bunny, mm -hmm. and he has a, a mirror in front of that. He looks at himself. He hears on the phonograph record, eh, what's up, doc? He will look in the mirror and say, eh, draw his mouth on the character, what's up, doc? Incredible. And this will okay. take maybe two or three feet just to have him say that. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, when they get this all done, uh, I say it took 125 people uh, six, nine months to make one six and a half minute cartoon. And uh, it's an awful lot of work. Yeah, I was watching, as, as we were talking before, the incredible detail on how even in the periphery uh, of, the, of the scene, everything was outlined and if somebody moved, it was a complete, a complete flowing movement of the hand and then, then I'm seeing a lot of things, be, it seems to be more jerky now. I guess it has to be done. Isn't there any way that the, and I asked you this before, but I want you to deny it on camera anyway, that the new computers or the new, the new technology can help the animators at all? Uh, they can help in a way, but you still know that it's it's a computer working. Mm -hmm. It's it's not as real as uh, full animation is. Yeah. So this is really a handy work. You in acting? What are the performing that you want to do now? I mean, uh, of the of the the different types. Like you're going to be able. You can do any type of character. I know. Do you want to do some some performing in the different? shows and situation comedies and uh, dramas that are that are uh, a that. little bit of it not too much uh, uh, it usually takes so much time uh, that's why I didn't do too many motion pictures I did one with Red Skelton mm -hmm. it's called Neptune's Daughter I think they're still showing it I did it about 35 years ago and uh, uh, this was good because I had it was like yeah. a summer hiatus I had and I didn't have anything to do it's when the radio shows were off. And I did this, uh, just this one picture with Red. Then I did another one with, uh, oh gosh, uh, Dean Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little thing with Abbott and Costello. But just, just so they were just little spots. I never like to stay on because motion pictures take so long to make. You know, Mel, you have worked um, with every major star and, and known every major star uh, in the entire business. You have been enormously financially successful. You have been regarded by your peers and by people favorably. So if anybody has been able to determine what success is in their life and up to 70 years you have, has that success in and of itself brought you happiness? Yes, the greatest of happiness because I love my work. I love to entertain people. I love to talk with people, meet people. Uh -huh. And uh, as I say, I speak at these 64 different colleges in a little over a year. And uh, all of the people are, are the same in each college I speak at. They all get the jokes, the gags, the little mm -hmm. things I talk about. 
and uh, they're, they're the same all over, whether it's Whittier, California, or uh, MIT in Boston. Is there anything left that you have not done yet that you really want to do? Uh, frankly, no. I just want to continue doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my son Noel will take on after that. You know, it's a funny thing. People say, well, who's going to do your voices? Because I'm kind of hard to imitate. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and um, I said, well, you know, we were traveling cross-country when, when my son Noel was just 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And we'd be going along and say, hey, look at the cow. He'd say, yeah, I certainly see him, Pop. I certainly do. And then I'd say, yeah, did he, yeah, did he, don't you think that road is yeah, kind of straight? He says, yeah, it's a, a, little, a, little, a, little, a long way, Pop, a, 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 a long way. And uh, he would answer me in the voice that I gave to him. So I know he can do it. But as I say, yeah. he's like me. He doesn't like to copy. I see. And he's uh, in production now, production and uh, direction. And he's produced over 8,000 commercials already for a Blank Communications Corporation. Mel, tell me again the story that you told me before. Uh, all right, wh how did Noel relate to you when he was a child, you know, with all, oh. with, with all the <laughs> things that he had? Well, he knew I could do the voices, and he used to, every Sunday morning, he'd bring the funny paper into me, and he'd say, read to me, Daddy. And uh, I would take a different voice for each one of the characters in the, in the cartoons or in the paper. And uh, he got quite a kick out of it. He couldn't I wait for Sunday morning. He'd always come bringing the paper in. I can imagine. But did he see you? Did he think of you as the as the character when you were doing the, the Jack Benny show? That I don't know. That? I don't did know whether he thought. <laughs> yeah. Did he see? Was it a big deal around the uh, around the house because of who you were? Uh, no, not particularly. Uh, my wife Estelle uh, more or less uh, prodded me on to do this stuff. She was a great benefit in helping me uh, helping me continuing the work. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I thought, well, gee, I can't do that. I might as well give up. She'd say, no, no, try again. You'll do it. Mm -hmm. And I could. Is she alive? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she, is she uh, with you now? Oh, sure. All right. And y'all work Beautiful together. Beautiful gal. Been married for uh, 45 years. What's the se what are some of the secrets of a successful relationship? You, I don't know whether you've had one, and you never know until you get inside and get to know someone. But assuming you've had a successful relationship and the way your face lit up when you said that, <laughs> uh, what, what is it that has made, uh, made a successful relationship? Well, it's like the old gag, you know, always hold her hand. And if you ever let go, you'll kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> have you no, we have our little fights and little yeah. squabbles, but uh, uh, we get along very well. You've been friends? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Why well, you say, yeah, sure, but that, that's kind of, you've, you've known a lot, of, a lot of relationships, and you've seen a lot among your friends, and, and it's not having a happy relationship or having one that is uh, a growing relationship and, and supportive of each other and, and helpful is, is not exactly a um, common thing. Well, no, we're very friendly, and we talk about various things and have discussions, and uh, we are very friendly, beside being man and wife. That, that seems to be a key. Is there any, in your characters that you, as you have developed in, over the years, you've developed a fondness, a particular fondness for Bugs Bunny. Has, do the, uh, well, I've lost my train of thought in trying to ask you about, about how many other characters that you have wanted to do. Do you see a difference in the sense of humor of the people that uh, are watching cartoons now and what you do? Because you have to develop a lot of yours in, in ad-libs and your timing. No, there's, there isn't uh, much difference now uh, because uh, the gags, the writers for these cartoons were so far advanced. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you just an example of little innuendos that they have that you didn't get when you were a kid. Like this, uh, one of the pictures I show at the college is uh, Academy Award winning Nighty Night Bugs. Uh, you see King Arthur's round table. Mm -hmm. And in one spot you see a little sign that says Sirloin of Beef. Mm -hmm. the next time you see Sir Osis of Liver. <laughs> when you were a kid you didn't get that. But sure. uh, as you uh, see it again and again, well, you, uh, you finally get those little innuendos that they put in. Nothing dirty. Did you ever work with the writers? Oh yes, all the time. Yeah, so they must th that must have been an... Uh, did you only work for Warner Brothers during that time? Uh, I was Were contracted to Warner's. Yeah. Uh, prior to that time, I worked for Walter Lance. Yeah. And I created the voice for Woody Woodpecker. I didn't that know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now being done by uh, Grace Stafford, mm -hmm. who was his wife. 
Yeah, I have seen. I have. Uh, I have seen her. Are, is this, this an equal opportunity business for both males and females that you've worked work with an animation? Like, what is when you do an when you do a? Let me get another character. All okay. right, when you're doing a play, and you're doing when you're doing a some animation, you're actually it's like doing a radio play, isn't it? I mean, yes, you've got the storyboard there, and then you've and got... And then the script is actually yeah. like a like a uh, radio script. But the actors that you've worked with, and having worked with so many of them in, in animation, how do they relate when they come in to do a, when they come in to do a, a, a cartoon or something like that? I always see uh, the voices are always bouncy. It's sometimes very difficult to get people to, uh, to do the character they do on radio. They get before a mic and, and uh, to do a, uh, an animated cartoon, mm -hmm. And they're, uh, they're kind of nervous about it. They just can't do it exactly as they did it on radio. Making that jump, when I'm trying to do some improvisational comedy, making that jump to get and com fully commit myself to a character, how do you, uh, I mean, I know you, you do it all the time, I mean, but, but how? How do you make that jump and fully commit yourself into a character? Well, it's, uh, it's very simple, as I, as I told you. Once you create a voice, you never forget it. I'll have a whole continuity uh, of a radio script, for example, and have... Uh, Maybe Pepe Le Pew here, you know, the little French skunk who kissed the pussy kid. <coughs> then it'll go into Speedy Gonzalez. Fast mash on me, go chase the cat, take cheese with the cat, I think. <laughs> and then, of course, Sam <laughs> Bugs Bunny always comes in there and interferes with everything. Then the porky pig will come along and fuck it at you, little bird. Oh, I thought I'd drop it at that. You see, it's very easy to change because after you create the characters, you never oh, forget them. Oh, yeah, sh it, sure. It's I know you say it's easy, but I'm just sitting here again. Just but you know, we used to, uh, we used to have a tough time. It used to take me a day, a day and a half, to just do the dialogue for a six and a half minute cartoon. How come? Uh, the directors would try to tell me what to say, and uh, I would say it exactly as they did, mm -hmm. and they'd say, "No, that's not it." So then I would try to give it my own inflection on the darn thing, and they would say, "Yeah, yeah, that's what I want." Mm -hmm. So they have it in their ear what they want, yeah, but it's just not—it's not, right. it's not right. no, no way to translate they can't tell it down me exactly. Yeah, but uh, we used to do it in continuity form, one character right after another. But I found that taking each character individually, like all of Porky's, all of Daffy's, all of uh, Tweety's, all of Sylvester's, and the various characters, if I do them individually, read the line ahead to know what inflection to do on the line I'm speaking. Uh, it cut the time down to one hour instead of a day and a half. And uh, that's how quick we can do it now. You know, you don't, when I, when I hear you talk about the past, I, was, I didn't listen like real intently to that question because something flashed on me. When I hear you talk about the past, I don't hear you like wanting to stay back there or wanting to do this. You seem to be a very current and present person. Uh, and Gee, thanks, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like you're, like, it's not like all your best times were in the past. I mean, you probably, you, you have worked and had such a fulfilling career, but yet all your best times weren't in the past. You seem like you're having a wonderful time right now. Well, I'll give you a good example. I want one. A guy fell down a flight of stairs. He landed down. A cop came up, and he looked at this guy, and it was, it was a wreck. He says, what happened? What happened to you? He says, that's in the past. I'm now looking forward to the future. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way you deal with it. Yeah, but if I can uh, continue to do the things I'm doing and entertain people, mm -hmm. as I say, I love my work and I love to entertain and meet people. And what is it about a performer, Mel? What is it about someone that, that enjoys performing and entertaining like yourself? Uh, I can't explain that. Can you give me any insight into it at all? Because I'm well, trying to figure out what it is. Just to love me. your work, be as natural as you possibly can, be as creative as you possibly can. Yeah. And like when I speak at the colleges, I'll tell the kids, they say, how do you create a voice? Mm -hmm. Say, well, you see a little kitten, for example. You wonder, how would that little kitten talk if it could talk? Now, you have to indicate it's a little kitten with a meow. <coughs> And then you know that he has a very high voice because he's just a tiny kitten. You have to tighten his throat and make him sound very small. That's how I would create a voice for a little kitten. Mm -hmm. And for a uh, hippopotamus, for example. Okay. He's big and he's heavy and he's fat and he's in the water all the time. Sounds <laughs> all my kind of water is. So this okay. is actually the, the way you create a voice. I used to do that in a car when I was driving around. People thought I was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> when when you see the people 
and, and I guess the question that I was asking is when when their faces light up, when you see that you have, you know, you're at a college audience and you see them laughing and you see them doing it. I had an improvisational show the other night that we did comedy show and I, and I did a line and everyone laughed. I mean, a whole group of people actually laughed at something that I said and it was an incredible feeling. It fed a, a really neat place within me, you know, that said, hey, that that's okay. And I was just wondering. The only way I can explain, the only way I can explain is it makes you feel good inside. <laughs> yeah, that's what it <laughs> to did. To know that you're, you're getting across and people like you. Sure. And in your personal, in dealing with the people out here in Hollywood, have you noticed the changes over the years in, in, in the people and the executives that you've dealt with? Because you've dealt with them, periods, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, you've dealt with them. Uh, I noticed a change in, in uh, some of the agency people. Mm hmm but uh, they are progressing along very wonderfully. Like I tried to get on the Joe Penner show. You remember Joe Penner? <laughs> you want to buy a duck? That was years ago. That was the first <laughs> network show I did. And uh, this uh, one, I kept asking this one man, won't you give me an audition? And uh, he'd say, uh, we'll let you know when the time comes. About a year later, he called me and said, we're giving you guys who think you're funny a chance to be funny. This is the, what he said. He said, yeah. be there at 11 o'clock. And I was there, and Joe Penner was in the booth. And I did a few different dialects and voices. And Joe Penner came out and he said, why haven't you been here before? He says, I could choose you every week. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I, I just had a little difficulty getting an audition. But nowadays, why, they know that uh, you can do a thing, and they yeah. either call you in or they have you audition for it or do a few lines sure. of, the, of the character. And uh, uh, they're progressing very well. Do you see the Do you see the uh, the people as far as the actors that you're relating with? Like like when you did a, uh, the television during the '50s, I was talking to Bob Easton about this also. That you had uh, was there a different pressure? Or was there a different feeling of since it wasn't so much like right now? There's a lot of money on the line. One pro program goes on, a producer could stand to make hundreds of thousands of dollars from a single program after it all gets out. Well, then there wasn't so much money, and so was there a different attitude because of that? Well, the only difference was fear that you wouldn't remember your lines. Nowadays, they have the idiot boards that show mm -hmm. you what you're supposed to say, and you look at it, and uh, they have the ca other character here, and it looks like you're looking at the character, but you're actually reading from the board. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's very simple, but when it first started, it was very difficult. You had to memorize every single line and word. And in many shows now, many great actors memorize every single word of them in line. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you memorize a lot? I did at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, I wasn't too good at memory, at memorizing lines. And I would have to find that I have to rehearse at home for hours trying mm -hmm. to get the lines right. Yeah, I haven't done, do you find, do you, have you ever done, you improvise a lot? Uh, when you're when you're doing your characters and you're doing them on on the uh, the cartoons, where does that come from? Where does the, the that place where just funniness happens? You know, just the the way you say it. I mean, do you know? Can you get uh, in touch with I, that? Place? I can't explain that uh, fully, but I will tell you that you must have a good ear in order to do these crazy things. Mm -hmm. You have to hear yourself, and you have to hear how you, what you're saying. Many people will talk into a uh, tape recorder, then you play it back for them, and they'll say, that's not me. Mm -hmm. And you know it's them that say the exact words. What are, can you tell <coughs> as, far as, the, uh, as far as the actors right now that are actors and actresses that, that are trying to do characters, and not necessarily for animation, but trying to do characters like we are in, our, in the different scenes? And can, can you give me any help or give me any, any uh, advice on... on on committing myself or, or doing this and... Yes, unless an actor tells you, I want it done this particular way, mm -hmm. I think the actor, actor should do it as naturally as he possibly can. All right, can you explain? To me, naturalness is, is a big factor in acting. Uh, like when I did the French violin teacher with Jack Benny.